Most of the time you can identify organisms using field guides. But not always. What if this was the first time this fish had ever been recorded? Well, then we'd need to name it. Today we call the practice of naming and classifying organisms systematics. But giving names to plants and animals started a long time ago with a guy named Linnaeus. Hello. In the 1700s, this Swedish doctor decided he'd give plants and animals names and then group the species together based on their similarity to each other. But he didn't just name things randomly. There were rules to keep things organized. He decided that every species should have a two-part name. The first part would be the genus, kind of like your last name, and the second part, the specific epithet, which is kind of like your first name. For example, the scientific name of humans is Homo sapiens. Latin is the language of systematics, so every name has to be Latinized. Today, this system is a nested hierarchy of classification into which all organisms fit. As an example, let's use mammals. All mammals are grouped together in the class Mammalia. They're then divided up into increasingly smaller groups called orders, families, genera, and then species.